Hi everyone, uh, my name is Dave and I'm, I'm going to be presenting uh, Ubercart 2.0 and Drupal, Drupal 6. We're, we're going to go through basically uh, Ubercart and Drupal 6. Um, I just wanted to take a quick survey. Who's done an Ubercart based site at this point? And, and anybody use 2 in uh, Drupal 6? Anybody use Ubercart 2? We got two people over here. And uh, has anyone uh, done an e-commerce uh, e commerce module site? Alternative to Ubercart, anybody? Yeah, a couple. couple. Okay. Three. Okay. Uh, so the, the beginning part of the presentation is just going to be a really high level overview of Ubercart, and then uh, the, the second half will be more of a, an in depth like pro look at a project that we did and some of the modules that we implemented and, and how we kind of went about it. So. Uh, so basically, the, the highest level, uh, what is Ubercart? It's an open source e-commerce system uh, for Drupal. It was built specifically for Drupal and uh, basically uses uh, very Drupal-like structures, hooks and, and modules and, and everything that, that you know somebody who does Drupal would be familiar with. Um, basically, it consists of a bunch of core modules, uh, mainly for you know products, carts, checkouts, uh, a whole bunch of payment processors and all the order f fulfillment. So basically, the back end of Drupal uh, invoicing uh, activity. Um, can everyone hear me? Okay. Uh, it, it's really flexible because it allows for extension uh, via contributed modules and their hook system. And uh, I, I like to implement it for my customers because it provides them with all the, the reporting the, the, for sales and products and order activity uh, that they need. And some of the, the possible applications would be uh, retail stores for physical or virtual goods, uh, file downloads, event registrations, which we'll go through, and uh, premium content subscription sites. Uh, some of the key features in uh, 2.0, um, you, you can create custom uh, product types uh, via CCK. And that allows you to uh, define custom fields and and really kind of keep everything like you like you were building any kind of content managed site in Drupal. Um, it lets you uh, choose from a variety of payment methods: uh, PayPal, Authorize.net, Google, and and a whole lot more through uh, contributed modules. Um, one of the new features in in 2.0 uh, is a, a single checkout page, which which is really nice. Uh, people don't have to go through multiple steps. Uh, configurable panes for um, billing and, and shipping addresses. Um, uh, another feature, uh, account auto account creation for anonymous checkout. Uh, there's reporting for sales, customers, products, like I mentioned. Uh, it's getting to be more themable, meaning um, there, there are more uh, ability to, to theme different parts of Ubercart um, with TPL files. And uh, like I mentioned, the, the hook system allows for extended functionality and you can import, basically import and export a large amount of products uh, via XML. A quick yeah. question, the uh, theming um, of 2.0, uh, uh -huh. is that actually well documented for people to pick up today? Um, I don't think it's really that well documented <laughs> and, and that's gonna be like some of the things that I, I think we can improve upon as a community, contributing documentation to, to Ubercart and kind of consolidating and organizing it. Um, it's kind of spread out all over the place. Different people have done, you know, walkthroughs and, and how-tos, but it's not all kind of in one place. Let me do a quick uh, poll. Uh, show of hands, how many here are the people responsible for producing the theme or maybe even designing, uh, even if it's just pure pixels? Okay. All right. Cool. Thank you, Dave. Yep. Uh, the, the current state of Ubercart, um, Unfortunately, there, there isn't a, a 2.0 release at this point. Uh, it's the RC candidate uh, 3. Uh, it's almost there. Um, I, does anybody know uh, a timeline of when that's going to be released? I don't know if anyone follows it, but I, I haven't seen a, a definitive timeline. Um, it's pretty stable at this point. I think there are only a few critical issues, and uh, I've deployed it on a bunch of client sites into production. Uh, some of the the improvements in, in 2.0, uh, less dependencies on contributed modules, which is really nice, keeps the sites uh, smaller and less overhead. Uh, a lot of performance enhancements, uh, definitely uh, usability enhancements, um, the, the single order page, uh, core API improvements, and now you can actually use uh, conditional actions in place of uh, workflow ng, 
Uh, so, you know, if, when an order is processed, you, you could fire some event and basically, you know, um, mimic the, the functionality of other sites. Uh, it comes in handy for registration and event sites. So that, that's pretty cool. Um, I, I like Ubercart. Uh, I found their, their community to be really helpful. Uh, the forums, has anybody been through their forums or asked a question? Have you guys had a good experience? Yeah, they're really quick on so far. Um, and if you go to the to uh, ubercart.org, uh, there there's basically a huge amount of contributed modules that, that people put together, and it's just like Drupal.org. Uh, they have their own um, contributed modules for all kinds of functionality. Uh, I I like that the UI is very customizable, and um, there are lots of ongoing improvements. Uh, Anybody who went to, to DrupalCon uh, 2009 in DC uh, will see that the, the maintainers are really active in the community. So it, it's, it's a great set of modules. Uh, yeah, like, like I just mentioned, I, I think there's a lot of opportunity for additional documentation, um, even more uh, themeability. I guess through, through the, the TPL files, there, there's still some stuff that that's kind of like hard coded into the modules. You're not able to, to get to it easily. Um, definitely uh, simplify the, the navigation for the admin interface. Uh, we, a lot of times we're, we're doing like custom interfaces for the admin side of things. And you know, it, it's tough for clients to, to kind of maneuver around there. Um, I, I think more security procedures, uh, more documentation on security. Because uh, I, I think a lot of people are, are implementing Ubercart and, and probably not aware of the, the potential vulnerabilities. And I, I think someone asked um, about the Visa PCI DSS compliance. Uh, Carrie? Yes, I did. Down in front? Yes. Um, I, I guess the, the short answer is that it's not compliant. And I think there are a lot of factors that um, make it difficult to, to get to that level of compliance. Um, specifically, I, I guess that takes into account the hosting, as well as uh, you know the connections to the banks and and your SSL certificates. So, how how do you mitigate that so that Visa doesn't say uh, you have too many sales on software we don't like uh, and we can't use it anymore? Yeah, I, I guess that that's the the question. Um, Basically, it's it's about a twelve thousand uh, dollar review process, from what I hear, and it's really time consuming. And um, I, I guess it would need to be like a community effort to, to get it sponsored and and you know start moving towards compliance. And then um, you know op another opportunity, obviously the the usability enhancements um, for the future. So that, that was just kind of an introduction to uh, Ubercart. I, I wanted to take everyone through uh, a project that we did. Uh, it's an executive network uh, for paid events and subscriptions. Um, we'll go through you know each one of these steps and, and I'll show you a little bit of, of the site and how we implemented it. Uh, so some of the modules we use, uh, obviously core Ubercart uh, depends on the, the token module. Uh, some of the, the recommended you know, modules that, that help make site building a lot easier, uh, CCK, Views, File Field, um, Image API, if you're doing product images, uh, that's completely integrated at this point. Uh, image Cache, Image Field, um, Secure Pages for securing parts of the site with SSL, and Admin Menu, which I, I think makes navigating the admin a, a whole lot easier. Um, some of the optional things that, that were specific uh, to, to this project and a few others, um, different payment methods that just lets you accept payments through the cart, uh, the reporting, and uh, basically the roles module. And then um, as far as payment, we're, we're using authorized.net for the uh, recurring billing. Um, free order, uh, because certain members of this site were, are able to check out uh, without, with a zero um, balance invoice and then uh, recurring fees, and then a couple more. Um, we use cart links that lets you uh, basically define custom buttons to add to cart and uh, restrict quantity, and, and I'll go through uh, how they were used in the site.
Uh, so we just kind of start out uh, setting up the events and subscriptions as products. And let me see if I can switch here. Yeah, hold on. Uh, did anyone have questions at, at this point before I get into? How? Um, it it lets you uh, define like certain parts of the the site that um, are, are under HTTPS using the SSL certificate. So um, I, I think it's actually a, a requirement of Ubercart, and uh, I'm, I'm sure there are a couple different ways you can go about doing it. Uh, let's see. Uh, so one of the, the first things you uh, go about doing uh, is basically adding your, your new content types uh, for the site. Uh, for this site, we have the event content type and the subscriptions content type. Um, that's pretty standard. You, you go through CCK, add the, the type and all the fields, and then you can come into uh, Ubercart and define classes uh, that correspond to the, the content types and they automatically become uh, products in your store. So you can create new products of these different content types. Yeah, let's see. So for each content type, uh, basically when you create new events, um, each content type has features, and, and these are some of the contributing modules that, that we implemented. Uh, Basically, it allows the, the content type to, to either be uh, recurring or uh, restrict the quantity so you can only add one at a time to the cart. Uh, these are each contributed modules. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so basically, um, an event can have a feature of restrict quantity, which uh, just means you can basically, you know, put one in, in a card at a time. Um, things like uh, subscriptions can have the recurring fee feature that uh, lets you um, automatically charge the card multiple times. Let me get back to my slide. So basically, um, you, you set up the, the events and the subscriptions, you assign the features to, to make it function the way you want, and then, um, let's see. Hey, yeah. Question. Uh -huh. Maybe you cover this. Uh, you don't need the events module to get events from Ubercart. Right, right. That, that, that's right. You can actually just create a, a custom content site called event. And then you're you're kind of assigning these different uh, features and functionality to to that event type. So if I added Ubercart to a site that I already set up a bunch of custom content types, I can mm -hmm. actually turn some of those on to be products or you know have kind of a for sale capability, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's exactly right. Um, so uh, in in this example, uh, we we implemented the UC recurring module. Um, it it was pretty uh, rough around the edges, but uh, it was still functional. And uh, you know, need, needed kind of a lot of work to make it user friendly. Um, basically, it, it uh, did a recurring charge uh, for subscriptions on a uh, time period. Um, for this project, it was either quarterly or yearly. Uh, now, in the the two x uh, development, uh, you can basically get an improved API, um, treat recurring fees as new orders, and and better handling for failed payments. Uh, basically. Uh, right now, if a payment fails, uh, it doesn't really report anything back to the site, so, so that's definitely a shortcoming. Uh, another um, requirement of the project was uh, discounts. Uh, basically, premium members can attend events uh, free of charge. So, let's see if I can...
So when you come into an event and you basically go to check out, um, it, it allows you to have a free uh, payment method, uh, which, which is nice because uh, you don't have to enter in um, credit card information. Uh, did anyone have any questions? That, that's pretty much what I had, and I, I was just going to answer questions. Uh, yeah, go ahead, I Mike. I have a quick one. I'm kind of new to all this, so I'm going to speak, but uh, I'm about to do a site for a client uh, that uh, basically what they want to do is they want to integrate uh, the store with uh, their FileMaker Pro database. Uh, this Uber card, you know, like the Uber card has things like that, it's crashing, but the uh, box, this module where you can connect to FileMaker. Uh, not that I know of. Um, there, there's a huge amount of contributed modules, so I, I'm sure somebody else had the, the same kind of problem. Uh, so if you go to ubercart.org. I have uh, about four questions. Uh -huh. First, uh, does ubercart support interfaces to uh, off-the-shelf uh, uh, Accounting packages for general ledger accounts receivable billing. Uh, not that I, not that I know. And then, um, is there any uh, capability to deal uh, with water style payments as opposed to cash payments for things? In other words, I'll trade you my uh, my Honda Civic for your uh, uh, bicycle, for example. So, like, on, on the site, people having different products that they're doing well, in exchange? You know, I'm thinking ahead in our economy with <clears throat> the possibility of um, lots of people going under because they have no cash. They may want to um, uh, basically do an arrangement by which uh, uh, they could hop uh, their uh, uh, grandma's uh, uh, sterling silverware for uh, uh, Whatever they need, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, barter system basically. Is yeah, uh, it really interesting. Um, I, I guess it's kind of like free cycling, that that kind of concept. Yeah. Um, I, I haven't seen one, but you know, I, I'm sure you could develop it pretty easily. You just have to assign I'd love value. To develop it. I'd love to know how to do it. To <laughs> That's what I'm asking. And then, uh, furthermore, um, does uh, Ubercard support uh, coupons? Yes. Yeah, there, there's a coupons module out there. That reminds me, is, uh, you know there's an auction module. An auction module? Yeah. Um, I, I think there's a pretty basic one, but nothing like, you know. Well, I'm not asking for the world view, but I don't like it. I, like, I use, uh, I haven't used Ubercard yet, but I use Zencard a number of times, and I know Zencard is an auction model, whereas the other hand, Magento, which is actually based not too far from here, is actually does not have an auction module. Yep. Um, I had a couple other issues. Um, and does it support multiple currencies? Uh, yeah, it does. Uh, the so the two point words, version does. Pay, uh, if I have a if I have a buyer uh, who can pay in euros, uh, I can sell in dollars, for example. Yeah. And um, then finally, I think uh, uh, can uh, can we? Support uh, multiple views of an object. For example, if, uh, for example, I want to set up a store, and I would like to have, um, uh, well, say, for example, um, uh, uh, silverware. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, if I want to have silverware, where I want to show, um, uh, say, a top view, a side view. Um, in a group, in a setting, for example, say I want to have five different views, would it support that out of the box? Uh, views in terms of like what product images? images? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it does. And you can actually uh, use Thickbox as a plug-in <coughs> module to show them as kind of overlays, like light box overlays. Okay, and that's part of the standard. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you have to install each one of the, the contributed modules separately. They, they don't come kind of packaged with Ubercart. But um, it, it, there are step-by-step -step instructions on, on the page, you know, with each module. But bottom line, if uh, I really wanted to immerse myself into this, uh, where would I be able to get more help? Uh, Ubercart.org or the, the Ubercart product page on uh, Drupal.org.
it, it kind of lists out all the, the recommended modules like CCK, Views, uh, Image Cache, Thickbox, things like that. And it, that's like, I actually have a, a slide uh, with a resource for creating, you know, kind of a step-by-step, -step, like how to install Ubercart, do all the security, set up products. So I'll, I'll be happy to share that with everyone. Yeah. Uh, do you need like a membership management software? Does it like have the functionality that goes, you know, you don't really need something extra like that, like a member or something like that? In, in what way? Um, I guess some of those software they'll like make sure that somebody can't like guess the friends their the logins so that multiple people log in and protects the subscription or membership. Um, I, again, I, I think you'd have to approach it from the the Drupal side, not the the Ubercart side. Like you know, limiting the number of sessions uh, a user could have. Um, in that case, uh, yeah, you, you can definitely you know build it out in terms of like member profiles and and things of that nature. One more question: uh, When you have a store type of operation, mm -hmm. uh, how do you ensure that um, uh, things, uh, or is there an escrow type of uh, an arrangement that can be provided with Ubercart, in which, uh, say, as a uh, as a buyer, I want to be sure that the uh, product gets delivered before the money gets transacted, mm -hmm. and as a seller, I want to. Uh, know for sure that the product arrives so that there isn't a claim back on me. It, I mean, this is a typical problem. It's got to happen all the time in e-commerce. How is that handled? Where, and you have like a trusted third party to handle the financials uh, before. Yeah, I, I think goes out or I, I think that would go uh, with the the payment processor. You know, they they would have to hold it in escrow. Um, I, I don't think Ubercart uh, allows for that, or you know, has something developed. So they, they would hold the transaction, and then Ubercart would communicate back and you know give them author authorization to release it. Is that, is that so? In other words, you you then have to uh, uh, have some kind of subscription with some kind of trusted third parties. That, uh, right, like um, if you're doing credit card transactions, like. Uh, Authorize.net would be the, the payment processor. They would actually, you know, run the credit card and, and process the payment. Um, so yeah, like Authorize.net or PayPal or Google Checkout even for payment processing. As far as like like an event type class, like you know, it, it's an event like. You can have an event, and maybe you can list all the attendees that are, are going to be at the event. Yeah, uh, what we did was um, integrated the the sign up module that that shows like you know kind of transforms like uh, a CCK event type into like an actual event with sign ups, and you can manage lists and. Um, Uh, they don't complete the the transaction. Yeah. Uh, it's just not completed. It, it's, it's not just, processed. It just doesn't show up as purchased. Yep. Did you write a custom module to handle creating a sign up after the purchase was completed, or? Yeah. So we were just calling the the sign up function and passing it the information, and it's it's a really small um, module. Um, I can actually show an example of that. It's not letting me switch back and forth. Uh, so, like I said, um, Ubercard has hooks uh, a lot like Drupal, and uh, this is the hook that, that we use, the order hook, and um, basically it's the, the update operation, and each time the, the order is updated, um, we look to see whether the, the payment it was received, or in the case of this project, there it could be a free order, so uh, it could be um, a free order. 
operation. And at that point, we loop through the products if they purchased uh, events or classes. Um, we loop through each one. We determine whether they're already registered and whether sign up exists. And then uh, we call basically the, the user sign up function. Uh, it was a little dicey. I mean, it wasn't like really smooth did at they, all. Did they automatically bill at a certain time during the month? Or um, yeah, you can define the, the period and um, it basically like creates an entry in their system and it periodically, you know, quarterly, annually uh, rebills them, does the recurring charge. And it's better to, to do it through authorized.net than through Drupal. You can actually do the recurring charges through Drupal as well, um, through the recurring module, but it actually stores the credit card information locally in the database versus it being stored at Authorize. Well, you mentioned this um, Does Drupal have a way of like, managing uh, scheduled discounts or like, say, limited time? Yeah. Um, uh, we only had a need for like really one kind of discount, and it was for, for when a, a user had a specific role. Um, there is a discounts module. It, it was a lot more than what we needed, so we just kind of wrote you know a small piece of custom code versus you know actually implementing that module. But I'm sure you can uh, like discontinue discounts and do them for a time period. Pretty sure that's a part of the module. Uh, yeah, uh, I noticed there was an inventory management. Plugin or uh -huh. I was wondering if you had any experience with that and how it works for you. Um, not, not a whole lot of experience, no. Yeah? So you mentioned a couple things were rough around the edges. I think you said uh, the which module. When you say that, do you mean you actually have to go in and write or change code, or is it just more sort of template? Yeah, uh, we, we had the patch. Uh, Small patches, um, you know, just basically created a patch file so we can keep track of it, you know, ongoing. But um, uh, especially the the authorized.net uh, client information manager um, doesn't really work at all. <laughs> so, so some things are just out. But yet you will go along with authorized. There's no better solution out there. Is um, that that's the the service my client wanted to use, so that that's kind of what we had to implement, and especially for the the recurring billing, which it worked reasonably well. Um, so so we just kind of went in that direction. Uh, I think PayPal has uh, just you know a few hours here and there. It's kind of typical overhead for that kind of service. What do they charge? Ten percent, five percent? I think. A little less than three, or somewhere between like two and three. Yeah, there's a transaction fee, then there's a monthly fee, um, and that, that's kind of ongoing. And the transaction fee is a percent. Yeah, percent. And I think it it's uh, decreases based on your volume. So the the more you know monthly volume you do, the the better transaction fee you can get. If you had a choice, which would you pick authorized on it as your process or choice, or would you pick um, it, it was pretty, you know, pretty well done as as far as the implementation of the the payment processor. We haven't had any, you know, real problems. Um, there are, there isn't a lot of communication, and especially the the way Authorize does it when you're in like developer mode, like it, it's really kind of tough to to track your transactions uh, through their through their payment system. So, I mean, it, it was okay. I think PayPal might be a better choice, but you know, I think it depends. Yeah. Did you uh, compare this, or did you have a choice of using e-commerce? Uh, we did, yeah, and I, I just felt like uh, Ubercart was getting a lot more support in the community and like kind of had a better path and more momentum. Um, we met the the guys at uh, DrupalCon, and you know they're really cool and active, and you know looking to to improve uh, Ubercart, you know, ongoing. The uh, Connect into the authorized .NET system as, a, as an option with PayPal or mm -hmm. a variety of others. 
Uh, what, was it pretty well uh, finished? I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. In, in fact, actually, someone had just released literally yesterday an update to the, the sign up e commerce integration. Well, actually, you have to have both. You have to sign up, you have to have e commerce, and you have to have sign up e commerce integration. And okay. just updated that yesterday for the six. Nice. I just did it this morning and see if it was Cool. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, how does it work for the uh, marketplace that many people want to sell the product? Oh, uh, like many sellers? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. So she was asking uh, how it would work for a marketplace, like if you had many sellers uh, all selling products. Um, I would guess that, that they would kind of all be users in the Drupal system, mm -hmm. and then they would have permissions to create new products. I see. And you know, you could create views and kind of give them like their own individual dashboard. And I found the module called Marketplace. Oh, you? Oh, oh, the, oh, the okay. It's not necessary to use that module. Or this module. Um, I, I'm actually not familiar with the, the Marketplace mm -hmm. module. Uh, I, personal preference, I try to keep everything in like CCK and you know, um, not okay. depend on modules as much as possible. Okay. Uh -huh. More questions about Ubercart 2? Dave? Yeah, and um, if, if anybody wants to go through the, the project, I, I was having some trouble like switching back and forth between the, the slideshow, so uh, that probably got a little disjointed. How many, how many are going to be interested in trying out Ubercart for their next uh, e commerce Drupal project? Cool. Probably soon. Yeah. You're, you're still learning Drupal, right, Adam? Yes, I am. Cool. Adam, uh, Adam is new to the group. And I'm, I'm, I'm the Korean guy, so it's like, you know, it's boring to me. You're a pixel pusher. <laughs> so how many here are pixel pushers? I think I asked earlier. All right, right on. Welcome. Uh, cool. Dave, anything else? Uh, no, that's pretty no. much it. We all done with Dave? Anybody? All right, thank you, Dave. <laughs>